In this video, we're going to be looking at topic 1A, States of Matter, and we're going to be focusing on the double outcomes as part of the IGCSE chemistry course from Edexcel. So we're going to be looking at the three states of matter in terms of their arrangement, movement and energy of the particles. We'll be looking at the interconversions between the states of matter, also looking at the dilution of coloured solution and diffusion of gases and how we can explain those experiments, as well as the terms solvent, solute, solution and saturated solution. So we know that there are three states of matter. You will have learned this back in key stage three, most likely in year seven. So we know that we have solids, liquids and gases. And each state of matter has a specific arrangement of the particles. They have a specific energy and the movement which helps explain the properties. So we can see in the solid here that all of our particles are packed tightly into one space. They are all touching each other and with a liquid, they have a little bit more space to move around, whereas with a gas, we can see that they have lots of space in between the particles. So for solids, because they are packed closely together and arranged regularly, they don't have space to move. So they will vibrate around fixed positions, meaning they simply just vibrate on the spot. They also then have strong forces of attraction which hold them together. With liquids, they are mostly touching, but there are some gaps that will appear. That means that they can move more freely past each other, so they can slide over one another. And the forces of attraction in a liquid are weaker than in a solid, so the particles are not arranged regularly. They are now arranged a lot more randomly. For gases, the particles are much further apart and they do not touch. They move randomly at very high speeds in all directions and there are almost no forces of attraction between our particles. So that should just be a recap from what you learned in Key Stage 3. Now we need to look at the interconversions between the different states of matter. So what if we firstly look at between solids and liquids, the temperature at which a solid changes to a liquid is known as its melting point. And the temperature at which the liquid changes back into a solid is its freezing point. So for example, water we know will melt from a solid into a liquid at zero degrees. It will also then go from water into ice at zero degrees. And we call it the melting or the freezing point, just depending on which conversion it is that we have. If you heat a solid, the particles are going to start to vibrate even more than they already do. And eventually they start to vibrate so much that they move apart and then they change into a liquid. So when we're going from a solid to a liquid in terms of melting, we are putting energy in to make the particles move further apart. When we are cooling it, when, or in other words, freezing, the energy is taken out and it means that the particles come closer together and get more regularly arranged. Going from a liquid to a gas, or from a gas to a liquid, again, it is also to do with the amount of energy that is either put in or taken out. So when we're going from a liquid to a gas, there are two things, or two words that people will use, and they tend to use them interchangeably, even though they're not. So first of all, we have boiling. So boiling occurs when a liquid is heated very strongly and it's heated so strongly that the particles vibrate so much and move so much that they overcome all of those forces of attraction and completely separate. Now a word that some people will use similarly would be evaporation but there is a difference between boiling and evaporation so we cannot use the words interchangeably. Evaporation happens when some of the fast moving particles at the top of a liquid overcome the attractive forces and escape. So whilst there is still some heating going on and the particles moving apart and escaping so that they're no longer touching, boiling involves heating all of the particles. Evaporation only happens at the surface of a liquid. Therefore, it does take much longer. If we have the particles being cooled from a gas into a liquid, they're going to move closer together and they're going to start touching each other and being able to slide past, but being a little bit less random and having more particles in one area. And we call this condensation. 
Now, a very small number of substances can actually change directly from a solid to a gas without involving any liquid. So they completely bypass the liquid stage. And the conversion of a solid to a gas is known as sublimation. A common substance that does this is carbon. Carbon will sublimate from a solid into a gas at a very high temperature. We can also go the other way where we have the gas then turning back straight into a solid and that is known as deposition. And an example as we said is either carbon or even carbon dioxide and you've probably seen at some point with carbon dioxide or dry ice going from the solid and turning straight into a gas and that is our sublimation. Now we're going to look at diffusion. So you'll have met diffusion again back in key stage three, and you will also cover diffusion in terms of biology at IGCSE. But the definition is largely the same. So diffusion is the spreading out of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So if, for example, you take a room and you spray an air freshener in one corner of the room, eventually the particles from that air freshener will start to spread throughout the entire room so that you would be able to smell it no matter where you are standing. But that does take time and that process of the particles moving over time is known as diffusion. Now diffusion can only happen in gases and in liquids because the particles in those substances are free to move. Diffusion is not possible in a solid because the particles are fixed in place. So if we have something like the example at the bottom here, we have our pink molecules, which have, could be a, um, a specific substance, maybe dropped into water, or it could be a substance being sprayed in a, in a room. And those particles at the start are all very close together, whereas the blue particles are all spread out. Eventually after diffusion, the pink particles and the blue particles will become randomly mixed. So the pink particles are spreading all throughout the blue particles and we get a nice mix of the two together. Now a common experiment that we do to show this is the experiment shown here. So we have a glass tube that contains cotton wool soaked in ammonia solution, which is our NH3 at one end, and then cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid, which is the HCl, at the other end. Now, both of these things, when they are liquid, can then evaporate and turn into a gas, and the vapors can then travel along the tube. And what we notice is we start to see this white ring forming in the tube. And what that white ring is, is the salt ammonium chloride and that is that solid so we're going from the gas and we are getting that deposition of ammonium chloride solid forming on the white tube now what we notice as well is that the white ring forms closer to the hydrochloric acid end and that is all to do with the mass of each of the substances ammonia when you work out its relative formula mass is 17 when you work out the relative formula mass of hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, it is 36.5. So what we see is that the lighter particles can move further. So the lighter ammonia particles are going to move further than the heavier hydrochloric acid particles. But this proves that diffusion happens because our two substances are complete opposite ends of the tube, yet somehow they can meet in the middle and form this ammonium chloride salt. So this is just an explanation of what we just said there. So the hydrochloric acid and the turns into the hydrogen chloride gas. The ammonia gas vapors are then going to join that and they're going to react to form this white solid. The gas particles are diffusing along the tube and the solid is going to form closer to the hydrogen chloride because the ammonia particles are lighter, so they're going to travel further. You may also see this diagram and or sorry, this experiment in class where you're looking at usually potassium permanganate in water. Potassium permanganate has a nice purple colour to it. 
and when you add it in it will diffuse through the water that we can see here so this is when it has first been added where you can see that water at the top still looks clear but you can see at the bottom and over time we get the purple color spreading throughout the water until we get that fully purple solution now what we see when we actually look at the diffusion process is that diffusion happens slower in liquids than it does to gases and this is because the particles don't move as fast the particles in a liquid move much slower than they do in, um, in a gas so when the potassium permanganate is added to water the purple color will diffuse throughout or will spread throughout it but it could take up to days depending on how large your water sample is for the color to fully spread and be a nice even mix so because the particles in a liquid are much closer together it's difficult for the potassium permanganate particles to get in amongst the water particles so it just takes that little bit longer for them to spread out without having to actually collide with each other whereas in gases the particles are much farther apart so diffusion happens much faster so the last section of this topic is solubility so we're looking at what happens when a solid is dissolving into a liquid and there's some key terminology that we need to know in double so the substance that dissolves or the solid generally is called the solute the liquid that it dissolves in is called the solvent and the liquid mixture that we get forming so it's important that we realize this is a mixture of the solute and the solvent particles we call that a solution so these three keywords are definitions that you have to know and what actually happens when we're making a solution is the attractive forces between the solute particles that holds them together so those forces that hold the solid in place start to break up and new forces then form between the solute and the solvent so instead of the solute particles being attracted to each other they start to become attracted to the solvent particles which are free flowing and they then start to spread apart and move away from each other and when that happens we then form a solution now it's important to note that only a specific amount of solute can be dissolved in a fixed amount of solvent so there is a, a specific amount it's not an infinite mass and the amount is going to depend on the substance itself but it will also depend on the temperature so the temperature of the solvent is very important generally the warmer the solvent the more solute can dissolve. So these two things are linked together. An important term that we have to know is a saturated solution. So a saturated solution is one which contains as much dissolved solute as possible at a specific temperature meaning we're going to have some undissolved solid left so you have your solvent you continue to add your solute stir it and dissolve it until eventually you reach the point where no more can be dissolved and that is our saturated solution and a little round to help you remember these key terms is the solute is what you put the solvent is where it went and the solution is what you're producing these are very common terms used in chemistry but they are also very commonly mixed up so please make sure that you do know the difference between solute solvent and solution so we're going to finish up by looking at some past paper questions so the compound with the formula h2o can exist in three states of matter and we've got our three states in the boxes and we've got our different changes of state so first of all the particles of h2o are arranged differently in each state of matter we know this and which one are the particles furthest apart well we know that's going to be the gas and that is steam so this is going to be our solid our liquid and our gas the particles have the least energy in which state well that's the one where they move the least potentially only vibrating on the spot so that is going to be in ice notice that i'm specifically using the words that are in the boxes but they will also 
except the different states of matter. So you could say gas for the first one and solid for the second and still get the mark. And lastly, in which state are the particles arranged in a regular pattern? Well, that is going to be in ice again. So now we're looking at the multiple choice. Well, change in state one, what do we call that? Well, one was going from a solid to a liquid. So ice going to water, and we call that D, melting. Change in state four was going from a gas to a liquid, and we call that condensing or condensation. So the answer is B. And the term sublimation is also used for a change in state. And sublimation is the change in state from, well, that is going from a solid, skipping the liquid and going straight to a gas. So our answer is D. One mark for each of those. And there you can see the mark scheme for those questions that we've just looked at. One more question. We have a kettle of boiling water and as the, the water vapour cools, it turns into droplets of liquid water. The change in state as we go from a gas to a liquid, well, we've just looked at a similar question, we know that this is called condensation. So the answer to there is B. And then for three marks, we want to describe what happens to water vapour when it cools to form the liquid water and we should be focusing on the changes in energy, arrangement and movement. So this is just summarising what happens when we go from a gas to a liquid. So first of all the change in energy, well the particles are going to lose kinetic energy. So they don't have as much energy, they're going to be moving much slower, you could say that they're going to be losing heat energy, potential energy, anything just to say that the amount of energy is going down. Then we can look at the arrangement where the particles are going to move closer together. So when they go from a gas being very spread out to a liquid, the particles get closer and they start to pack more closely or the gaps between the particles get smaller. And lastly, the change in movement, the particles are going to move less freely or less randomly. So as we go from our gas to our liquid, they're losing that energy, they're starting to move closer together so they cannot move as easily or as randomly. Three marks, one for each point. And last, there we can see the mark scheme for those questions. So that's everything for topic 1A, States of Matter, for the double content. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back soon.